morning, everyone. How we're doing this morning? Hallelujah. The Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. The psalmist David says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Are you glad when someone told you, let's go to church this morning? Amen. I was glad. It's always so good to be in God's house with his people. Amen. God's so faithful. The psalmist David also said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Isn't that amazing? He was king of Israel and had all, all the things that you would ever want for it. He said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So Lord, we worship you today. We're so grateful. Are you ready to worship the Lord this morning? Giving your heart of praise, amen. Let's give the Lord a great hand clap. Come on, let's worship him. Salvation, one no way that leads to life, one redemption, one confession. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe in crucifixion by his blood. I have been set free. I believe in the resurrection. Hallelujah, His life is left this All praise to God the Father. All praise to Christ. Come on, sing it out, church. All praise to the Holy Spirit. Our God has overcome the King who was and is and evermore will be in Jesus.
never overcome your life There is no rival That can ever stand against your mind You've always been with us Every battle you've already won Oh, you've already won
God. You deserve all the praise. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you brought me through. I thank you for everything that's led up to this moment where we can sit here on a Sunday morning on Alexander Road and give you praise, give you all the honor and all the glory for everything in our life. So many times, Lord, that I thought victory was mine, but it was really yours looking back on it. It was you guiding me. It was you protecting me and covering me. We just give you all the praise. Nothing we have is ours alone, but it's yours, God. It came from your hand, and we're thankful for it. We're thankful to be standing here with breath in our lungs. That you woke us up this morning. I'm so glad you're here. Amen. 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 Are you glad that I'm here? Yeah. Oh, man, I'm glad. I'm glad you're here, baby. I'm glad Jesus is here. Amen. Yes. Because if he's not here, we don't need to be here. That's right. Amen. We're in trouble if he's not here. Hallelujah. Well, the worship team, y'all did just amazing. Danny, Juan, Jessica, all the team. Every Sunday morning, they lead us into his presence. I, uh, I love the worship. Amen. I know you do too. And um, we're going to share the word today. How about that? Are you ready for the word? Yes. Amen. Pastor Bob was just leading us through communion and talking about the cross. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to mention three aspects of the cross, but there's many right. aspects to the cross. But we're going to touch on three of them today. Hallelujah. Let me get my notes out. Ready? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody say the cross. Where would we, in, any of us, be without the cross today in our Amen. life? Amen. The first part of the cross, aspect, aspect of the cross that we're going to share today is through the cross and what Jesus did on the cross, we have salvation from that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The cross was not just a plan of redemption, although it was but a way of life. Everybody say, a way of, life. way of life. Jesus didn't just die for us. He died as us. Amen. Come on. Yeah. He took our place. Amen? Yes, he did. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So our first scripture today, I want to start with uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 through 14. Colossians chapter 2. Verses 13 through 14. You who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, 
having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. Now, I love that translation there. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't leave anything out. That was you and I. I mean, have you ever had a uh, debt cancel later call you? <laughs> Say, your debt's been canceled. <laughs> Few and far between sometimes, but we definitely have the debt collector, amen. But it is a wonderful thing to have your debt canceled. In the natural, but hey, how do you know that Jesus canceled all of our debt on the cross? Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It should have been you and I, baby. It should have been. It should have been. <laughs> and he, he took our place. And thank God he didn't just stop halfway. Listen, he, he had the power to say, okay, angels, peace out. I've, I've gone this far, but that's all I'm going to do. Thank God he went all the way. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. There's no song uh, says all the way. I'm going all the way. No turning back. Yeah. Jesus didn't turn back. No, he didn't. I'm so glad he didn't. Because we wouldn't have the opportunity to sit in this house today right. had he turned back. But he said it was the joy that was set before him. What was that joy? It was you and me. He saw us and he wanted to redeem us. Amen. When we were studying for this message, one of the things the Lord kept showing me, of course, we're in a, the Christmas season and we're honoring the birth of Jesus, right? We should be honoring the birth of Jesus. Um, some do, some don't. <laughs> But we should be. And so when you're thinking about the birth of Jesus, uh, I love the Gospels and how they read. But Luke talks about Jesus being born, and they wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and they laid him in a manger. Right? Jesus just didn't come to be born. If he had stopped there, we wouldn't be here. That's right. Right? Jesus was born with one mission and one mission only, and that was to die. He came with a mission to die. He was born to die. Jesus didn't just stop at the death on the cross. Pastor Bob said it earlier. He went to the grave, right? And he was wrapped in clothes, in, a, in this, this cloth, even in the grave. Like he, that same kind of cloth that they wrapped him in in the manger, he's wrapped in in the grave. Right? But before he resurrects, he takes off that cloth. <laughs> and he folded it. And he laid it there. And he's saying, I'm... I'm, I'm never doing this again. I'm out of here. And he conquered death, hell, and the grave for you and me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus paid it all. He took all the debt of our sin. It should have been us on the cross, like my honey just said. But instead, Jesus went all the way. He didn't stop halfway. He didn't just stop at his birth, but he resurrected. And the Bible says he will come again and he will receive his people unto himself. I love Jesus. And I love what he did for me at the cross. It's the most beautiful thing ever. And what we're celebrating at Christmas is not just his birth, but we're celebrating his death and his resurrection. Amen. And I am so thankful he didn't just stop at the manger, honey. Oh, I'm so glad. Amen. So grateful. Amen. Oh, man. You want to read, want me to read that next yeah, scripture? Yeah, let's read the next scripture here that we have. Romans, uh, if we have it, guys. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. Yeah. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. How many of you are grateful for his life Amen. that he gave you? Amen. 
When you surrendered to him, yes. you gave him your heart. Yes. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Without, without his free gift of salvation today, yeah. we would have those wages upon us. Right. We would have the death upon us. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus took it For all. For the wages of sin is death. Woo. That's what you, you pay the man. Yeah. You pay the man. But thank God, Jesus was the man on the cross. Yes, he was. Amen. And he gave us eternal life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for salvation today. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue on. I believe uh, you want to do, uh, read the, you want me to read the next one, babe? First uh, Corinthians, Corinthians 118. 1 118. You got it? I got it. For the message of the cross, now get this, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Wow. Yeah. Has anybody ever looked at you like you were crazy when you were talking about the cross? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? It's foolishness to those who are perishing. Yeah. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. Woo, there's power in the blood yeah. and there's power in the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. And when Jesus came, he came to show us the way because he is the way. And he said, I'm going to live this thing and I'm going to show you. The Bible says, listen, he was God and he was man. He was all God. This is a mystery that we still can't completely wrap our minds around, but he was all God and he was all man. Yeah. And he suffered, the Bible says, in every way you could suffer, right? To feel our own pain. So when you and I go through stuff, Jesus has already been there. Yes, he's yeah. already felt he's already, it. Yeah. He's already took the pain. And then he not only took all the pain and all the suffering, he took all the sin. Yeah. Our past, our present, and our future. Jesus took it Oh, yeah. Ooh, and that power of the blood in the cross is still speaking to us yes, today. Yes, it is. Amen. Yeah, it speaks a better word. Amen. I love Jesus. And then Galatians 1, 3 through 5 says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself. Everybody say he gave himself. He gave himself. For our sins. For our to sins. To deliver us from the present evil age. Wow. According to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Wow. You know what I love about that? Is that the cross and the power of what Jesus did at the cross is still delivering us today from this evil age. It may have happened over 2,000 years ago, but the blood and the power of what Jesus did at the cross is still giving us victory. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, I have the victory. I have the victory. Because of what Jesus did because for me. Because of what Jesus did Ooh. for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I love this. Yes. And I love preaching about the power of the blood of Jesus and the cross. Amen. One of my favorite hymns is on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and, and shame. shame. Man, Jesus I took it. And I'm so thankful. Yeah. I'm so thankful. So what's beautiful is Jesus is saying, he took it all the way to the cross. And he's saying, if you want to be my disciple, this is the second aspect of the cross. If you want to be my disciple, you got to take up your cross and follow me. Yeah. What does that mean, Pastor Cindy? Well, it means this. We're dying to ourself. Yeah. It, it, it means it costs me something, Pastor Todd. It does. Salvation is free, but it costs us. Yeah, so salvation's yeah. free, right? But if I'm going to be a disciple, a laid down life, yeah. I live a laid down life. Right? Yeah. right? Exactly it's going to cost me something. What does that mean? Okay, let's just say God speaks to me and says, okay, I want you, uh, how many of you have ever heard the Lord speak to you? Yes. Okay, whether, 
whether you're, sometimes it's not an audible voice, most of the time it's not, it's just an inward voice inside of you. Yeah. Lift your hand if you've heard him yes. speak to you. Yes. And it, there's been times he said, okay, I want you to get up at this time and I want you to spend an hour in my presence. How many of you ever heard the Lord speak to yeah. you like that? Okay. Or I need you to get up and bake a pie and take it to your neighbor. But I had plans today, Lord. Mm. Well, I need you to put down your plan for a minute and pick up mine. Come on. That's taking up your cross. Because it costs you something. It's yeah, costing cost you, you time. time. Yeah. Cost you money. Do you know how you spell relationship? T I M E. Wow. Yeah. So, I take up my cross. If I'm going to be a disciple, that's what the Bible says. What's yeah. that scripture, baby? Can you read it? Luke, yeah, read it. Luke 14, 27. Whoever does not carry his cross, his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. That's pretty straight, isn't it? That's pretty straightforward. <laughs> How many of you want to be a disciple? Amen. Every one of us do, right? But the Lord's saying here, if I don't take up my own cross, because my cross is different from yours. Yeah. That's why the Bible says don't judge ourselves among ourselves. Amongst ourselves, that's right. Right? That's not wise. Because there's things that God's going to ask of you that he may not ask of me. Things that he may ask of me that he may not ask yeah. of you. Everybody carries their, their own, own cross. cross. Yeah. Right? But the reality is, in taking up that cross, there's going to be times it's going to feel painful and it's going to cost you something. Yeah. Some say, I want, I want to be in covenant, but I, nobody wants to bleed. Nobody wants to be cut. You know, I, I love the salvation, Lord, this free gift. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to, do I have to lay down my life? Yeah. It's a real, it's a real. It's a real thing. Well, he said, you, will not, you cannot be my disciple if we don't carry, if we don't carry our own cross. Then wow. Matthew 16, 24 says, let me go back to that. Sorry. I lost it. Is this helping anybody? Hallelujah. Matthew 16, 24 says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself. Everybody say, deny myself. Deny myself. Take up my cross. Take up my cross. And follow him. Follow him. And we live in a Western culture where everything's about self. Yeah. I need my me time. I need my, all my things. It's all about self. It's our Western church. Yeah. Am I right? Come on. If it's going to cost me something, maybe not. If it's going to require extra time with me, maybe not. Come on. I mean, have you ever been through a drive-thru and got impatient at the drive-thru? All the time. We get in there and it's, you know, we're, we're, we're like, this is a drive through What's taking so long? Is, Every, is Wave and Daisy here today? Are you out there? Wave's our Christian rapper, amen? I love it. I wrote a song from a drive through It was a rap song. Y'all do, y'all want to hear it, don't you? I wrote a rap song. I knew that was coming. And she's talking about driving through an easy... You know, fast Pastor food, gonna rap. that's the way we're living our life. And if we have to slow down at all yeah. and actually cook a meal, it takes time. Amen. We, it takes patience. Anyway, How'd it go? I was driving through a Taco Bell one day. And uh, this was pre, this is pre planet fitness days. Yeah, this was pre planet fitness. We haven't been fitness. through there in a while. I, I wasn't going to the purple and yellow yet. No, not yet. Y'all know what the purple and yellow is? Planet Fitness. It's our new home. That's our new home. Uh, so, but I drove through the drive-thru, <laughs> 
And I got through the window and the lady gave me my food and then she gave me my drink. But I looked at my drink and my drink didn't have any ice in it. Not good. Which is, you know, it's not the best. It's still kind of cold, you know, but it didn't have any. I'm used to having ice. I mean, you used to have an ice in your drink when they give it to you. Come on. And as soon as I pulled out from the drive-thru, it had to have been the Lord. It had to have been the Lord. It had to have been the Lord. Give me this rap song. (laughs) And it come to me. Just, man, down low. How's it go? How's it go, baby? Driving through the drive-thru. Trying to get my food, food. I go to get my drink, drink. And my drink ain't got no eyes in it. My Coke ain't got no eyes in it. What? What? Because the ice machine is down. My Coke ain't got no eyes in it. Come on. How you mean? You think that's a good rap? Come on, baby. You I've been holding rap. that back. I've been holding it back for many years. Wave's going to give me a cool beat for it. He's going to give me a cool beat for it. We're going to record gonna it in the studio. Song. You're going to be on the next song. Hallelujah. Baby. Driving through the drive through Come on now. But Come back on. to what Pastor Cindy was saying. Come on. We want it now. Amen? Yeah, we do. We want it fast. Mm-hmm. We don't want to wait. Mm-hmm. And that's the that's We don't the want anything that costs us anything. And I, I'm preaching to the choir here because, like, I wanted a pill to lose weight. Come on. Anybody out there with me? I wanted the pill to lose weight. I wanted the fat to just fall off. I wanted to, I didn't want to eat salad. I wanted to eat donuts. Come on. Come on. I wanted the miracle. I didn't want the process. Ew. So when I had a heart attack a year ago, and the Lord starts talking to me about all kinds of things. Actually, he was yeah. talking to me before the heart attack. Actually, the Sunday before the heart attack, I preached on the fear of, or we preached on the fear of the Lord, and I shared what the Lord showed me. In Proverbs, it says, those that fear the Lord lack nothing. Yep. And I just, I read it, and I've read that before so many times. But, but that, that day, it became rhema. It, it like jumped off the page to me. It wasn't just a scripture in the Bible. And the Lord said to me, do you lack something? And I said to the Lord, I do. I lack all kinds of things. Number one, I lack is in my health. Wow. And the Lord said, well, it's because you haven't feared me in that area. You feared me in everything else. And you know what? It wasn't, it wasn't a mean rebuke. It was a very sweet rebuke from the Lord. <clears throat> and I repented. And I asked the Lord to forgive me. Because see, what had happened to me is food had become an idol in my life. Yeah. And I was sharing this with Jake, Pastor Jake. Pastor Callie and I were born in a home of two alcoholic parents. And there wasn't food in our home when we were very, very young. And so I remember as a little girl trying to pull a chair up to the stove, trying to figure out how to scramble an egg so I could eat. There were times I would just go to school so I could get a free meal, right? So I knew what it's like to be hungry. And I secretly made an oath to myself and the Lord, I'll never go hungry. My kids will never go hungry. Nobody around me will ever go hungry if I can help it. And I had this oath that I had to repent of because food had become an idol in my life. I know it's a little quiet in here. Okay? And really, as churches, we don't talk about health. We want to tell you to pray and fast, and we want to tell you to read the Bible, and we want to tell you to share the gospel, but we never talk to you about your fork. And listen, I'm preaching to the choir because God's got me here, and it took a heart attack for me. I don't want it to take a heart attack for you, right? I'm saying this from a place of a lot of love and just compassion because I understand 
I remember going to a gym and a little skinny girl wanting to be my trainer. And I looked at her and I said, have you ever had a weight problem? She said, no, ma'am. I said, can you go find me a different one? I said, I'm not trying to be mean. I appreciate you being willing to help me. But if you've never been where I'm at, you can't really understand. So I wanted the, the trainer that had lost 150 pounds and that knew what it was like to be a chubby person and struggle. Yeah. See, my struggle, I, made, I made, also made an oath to God. I would never become an alcoholic. I would never become a drug addict. But here's the thing. I wasn't an alcoholic or a drug addict. I was a food addict. It was a legal drug. You got to eat to live. So the enemy looks for the crack in the door. He's like, okay, I can't get you to forfeit your faith or cheat on your husband or do uh, whatever sin that we deem to be big. But maybe I can destroy your health with donuts. And take you out before your time. That wasn't a part of this message today. But I'm sharing it as my own personal testimony to you to say, okay, God, is there any area in my life? It may not be food for you. It may be something else. You know, everybody's different. Right? And everybody struggles different. And everybody's cross is different. So every day I'm getting up and I'm taking up my cross. And you know what part of that is? Saying yes to God and my health. Amen. But I don't want to go to the gym today. No, you're going to the gym. Okay, God. And all those pictures you see on me on Facebook, I, don't, I just throw my hair back in a, a thing. I don't have the strength to put makeup on, but I'm like, I'm going to go to Planet Fitness we today. Get it done, though. And I'm going to walk on that treadmill, and I'm going to eat some greens, and I'm going to eat my salad, and I'm going to try to take care of this temple. Amen. Right? <clears throat> so, so the reality is, when you take up your cross and follow God, everybody's cross looks different. But nonetheless, if we're his disciples, everybody say, I'm his, I'm his disciple. I'm his disciple. You know what a disciple is? It's a disciplined learner. Yes. A disciplined learner. So there's some areas in my life I'm still learning and growing in. One of them is my health. Hallelujah. Right? Because I lived in idolatry for years in that area. Somebody talk to me about my health. I just put my fingers in my ears. Walk away. Right? <clears throat> so here's the reality. Everybody's life is different, but God is moving in all of our lives yes, he is. to bring us to a place of full, full surrender. surrender. Amen. So there was this area of my life and my health that I hadn't fully surrendered. Right? So now God's doing a work in that area of my life. I'm 61. It took me to get to 61 to make that decision. Actually, it took a heart attack because I was pretty hard-headed. Um, but God wow. saved my life. I could have not woke up. That's so true. So every day Thank is a Lord. gift, right, babe? Brand new we day. wake up with a new day. Amen. So I'm here to say you can do it. Just be obedient to whatever God says do. Yeah. Take up your cross. And follow him. Amen. Be his disciple. Be a disciplined learner in whatever that looks like. So Matthew 16, let me read it in the Passion Translation. I love this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if you truly want to follow me, you should at once completely reject and disown your own life. And you must be willing to share my cross and experience it as your own. Maybe your cross is illness yeah. and trusting God through an illness. Yeah. Maybe your cross is a sick child yeah. 
a sick family member. You know, I watched um, Mike and Hannah walk through a season with their son, Liam, trusting God, right? David and Chris Finney with Ellie, trusting God. Pastor James and Linda in a season right now, trusting God. They're actually here worshiping today. Worshiping. Hannah here worshiping today. Worshiping the one true and living God who understands and knows all things. Things that we have no answers for in this earth. We live in a fallen world. And you will go through suffering and pain. The Bible says you will. But see, the Western church wants to give us our best life now. We, want to, we, want, we only want to preach things that are positive and talk about the great things that are coming in our life. And we never want to talk about the third aspect of the cross. The first is Jesus bringing salvation. The second is us taking up our cross and following the Lord. Yes. But the third is the fellowship of his suffering. Yeah, Paul said, I want to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. Uh, yeah. You know, we don't we don't hear that no. much, and we don't pray that really because yeah. nobody wants to suffer. But suffering produces something in us that nothing else can. Yeah. You know what it produces? Number one, compassion. Compassion for other people. The Bible says that the trying of our faith, which that means suffering. <laughs> going through some trials, produces some really wonderful things in our life. Let's read that, babe. Where is that? Uh, Philippians chapter 3. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 through 11. There we go. Let's read that. But, however, again, I, but whatever, again, I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For he, for his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. Yeah. In order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. Amen. The righteousness from God that depends on faith. Verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Come on. That's a lot of stuff right there. Then there's Romans 5, 3 through 5 that says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings. Everybody say rejoice. Rejoice. In our sufferings. sufferings. Knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. Yes. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts yes, through the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit who he has given to us. Yes. Woo, hallelujah. We have hope hallelujah. in Jesus. Thank you, Even Lord. in the midst of our trial and in the midst of our suffering. Romans 8, 17 says, Now if we are children, then we are heirs. Everybody say, I'm an heir. I'm an heir. Heir of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. Wow. James 1, 2 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, Consider it an opportunity for great joy. Wow. So what do we do in times of suffering? Because here's the reality. When we get to heaven, there won't be no suffering. Heaven, there's no pain. Heaven, there's no suffering. Only here can you and I, baby, 
offer a sacrifice of praise to God yes. in the midst of suffering. Yeah, so good. I'm not praising him for the pain. I'm not praising him for the loss of a loved one. Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm praising him in it. In the pain. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's the enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But here's the reality. We live in a fallen world, so we're going to go through some stuff. Yeah. So what, I, what do I do in that moment of pain? Do I get mad at God? We have a choice to make. Do I get mad at my family? Do I get, I get frustrated? I mean, and, and trust me, we're human. But the reality is we have, we have one of two choices. We either get angry and walk away from God because of what's happening, or we kneel and we offer a sacrifice of praise yes, to God. Lord. And we say, Jesus, I don't understand why we're walking through this, but I know you are faithful and you are righteous and you are just, and I worship you in this trial. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. The fellowship of his suffering will transform us into his image. If we allow it to, but we have to allow it to, we have to say, yes, okay, God, I'll understand this. I don't get this, but I trust you through it. And I will not turn my back on you and walk away. Wow. I'll continue to worship you through the storm. Hallelujah. I'll continue to praise you to my last breath. Yeah. Let's lift our hands right now. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. It's like brooding over his people. And he's saying, I love you. I'm here to help you. I'm holding up your arms. Would you trust me in the suffering? Will you trust me in the trial of your faith? Will you leave on me and not to your own understanding? Will you allow the pain of this cross that you're carrying to transfigure you into my image, my image of love, my image of compassion, my image of hope? Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. It's this little book I'm reading called Experiencing the Depths of Jesus Christ. And in chapter 7, this woman talks about abandonment and suffering. And she said, you must be patient in all the suffering that God sends you. If, you love, if your love for the Lord is pure, you will love him as much on Calvary as on Mount Tabor. The Lord Jesus loved his father on Mount Tabor when he was transfigured. But he loved him no less on Calvary, where he was crucified. Surely, then, you should love the Lord as much on Calvary, for it was there that he made the greatest display of his love. It's easy to love God in the good times. It's easy to worship God in the good times. It's easy to praise God in the good times. But but it's when you're going through hell, it's when you're suffering that your praise becomes that sweet smelling savor to God, that sacrifice. That's when it's a sacrifice of praise. 
want our prayer partners to come and we're just going to open the altars for prayer. And if you need prayer today for supernatural strength and grace for the journey, maybe you're going through something extremely difficult right now. Jesus wants to be your all in all. And he wants to uphold you with his righteous right hand. And he wants to minister to you today in your pain and in your suffering. So if that's you, I want you to come forward if you need prayer for that. Or you need to be saved today. You need to give your heart to Jesus. Today is the day of salvation. Jesus loves you and he wants to save you and set you free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Found liberty. across the building. Lord, I just thank you for your presence today. I thank you for those who are in the altar today, and I thank you, Lord, that you're healing them, and you're strengthening them, and you're setting them free. I ask you to bless this church, Father God. I ask you, Lord, to impress the cross upon our hearts this week, and help us to live lives that are fully surrendered and devoted to you. Help us to take up our cross, Lord, every day, and follow you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. You're dismissed. So oh.